Hey, it's Snake. This is part one of a two-part series. Since my authentic gun sounds pack has reached over 100 downloads, here's my extensive guide for how you too can use audio on a professional level. This guide is designed in such a way that you can do more than just record sounds because being a solo developer or a small team means you'll have to squeeze as much as you can for an affordable all-for-one solution. Everything here can be used for recording sounds, voice work, streaming, music, and more. Even though you probably want to jump right into the guide, I'd like to share my ethos behind the topic. I've been in a few bands since 2018 which forced me to learn audio engineering on a budget. Our efforts allowed us to release a single and produce a handful of unreleased demo tracks. Currently, I'm still using these techniques for my YouTube channel and my team's game, Soldier's Descent. I've learned a lot from these experiences, so I'm hoping to extend this knowledge to anyone watching this. There are only three things that limit your ability to design sounds. Hardware, environment, and creativity. Creativity isn't something I can help you with, at least in this part. If you already have a microphone that you plan on using, and a pop filter, go to the configuring your mic chapter where you can properly set it up. I'm serious when I say get a pop filter. Getting your microphone ready is by far one of the most important things you can do when recording audio. Your bottleneck isn't your ability to use software. It's how you use your hardware. It's like rust on a sword. It's easier to prevent rust than to clean it off. Cleaning off the rust reduces the quality of the sword tenfold. As another saying goes, you can't polish a turd. All you really need is a microphone and a pop filter. That's it. This is really your only required financial setback, but even lower end microphones can provide good quality if you know where to look. Everything else can be done for free. However, if you're looking for a microphone, get a cardioid microphone. Cardioid focuses sound directly in front of the mic. And the diagram here shows how a cardioid hears sound when looking at a bird's eye view. Because cardioids are less sensitive to sounds behind them, these are a go-to for recording. I approve. Stop a snake seal of approval, right? No, no, uh, move it a little bit. Uh, perfect. I do not recommend a super cardioid or a dynamic microphone. Even though they focus on sound in the front better, they have the downside of being sensitive to sounds directly behind them. They have a tighter cardioid pattern, but you lose out on a lot of sound detail as a result. They're designed for being on stage and recording guitar amps. Omnidirectional mics pick up sound basically everywhere. You'll most often see these in stuff like podcasts because they pick up sound in all directions. I highly do not recommend Omnis for sound recording because of their principal design. They're so sensitive they can pick up your PC fan, chair creaks, etc. very easily. If you do use an omnidirectional microphone, they can work as well as cardioid mics if you're very careful. Everything in this guide still applies, but you'll have to approach with a lot more caution. There are also two cable types microphones might use, USB or XLR. USB is plug and play. You just plug them in and they work. You don't need any other equipment for a USB mic to function. The only con to a USB mic is what you see is what you get because everything is built into it. XLR microphones require an audio interface, which may set you back another $100, but that means you can better fine tune your sound. The XLR cable format is also the standard for professional audio production. An XLR microphone standalone can cost as much as a USB of a similar quality. Personally, I don't notice the difference between the two cable types, so you'll be fine with just a USB mic. When it comes to buying a specific microphone, I can't really say which one to get because quality microphones are becoming more affordable. What I can certainly say is that you're going to have to do your own research based on your own budget. If money is a concern, start at the $50 mark. I know that might be a fair bit to start, but you're most likely going to be using this microphone for many years for many different purposes beyond recording. Back in 2015, I got the Blue Snowball because that was THE budget microphone to get with the best quality. I'm still using it now as of recording, and I've used it to record the audio for the authentic gun sounds pack. The best advice I can give for purchasing a microphone is if you think it sounds good, then it's good. Trust your ears. Check YouTube to compare microphones at different price points. For the love that is everything, get a pop filter. They're used to reduce sounds that are plosive, like buh or puh. These can sound very unpleasant, even on the most expensive mics. I'm gonna take my pop filter off to show what I mean. Buh. Puh. I'm about to bust. This is most common when doing voice work, but certain sounds recorded with objects can also have plosive properties. So a pop filter is a must have. Luckily, 
These are cheap. You can get a pop filter for about eight bucks on Amazon and it will do the job perfectly. One piece of equipment I highly recommend is a boom arm. It's a crane that allows you to fully adjust your mic. Sometimes the mic you purchase comes with either a boom arm or a mic stand. I recommend upgrading to a boom arm because you shouldn't adjust around the mic. The mic should adjust around you. Get the cheapest boom arm you can find on Amazon. They start at 15 bucks. You might also want a shock absorber. These remove any vibrations that can happen, but that's just a small footnote. If you plan on recording music, owning an audio interface is a must have. If you don't plan on recording music, you can skip this part. As a small team, Scarlett Focusrite is the best, most affordable audio interface you can get. More importantly, get the model with both XLR and quarter inch cable support. So in that way, you can plug in mics, guitars, and pianos. TLDR, get a microphone with a cardioid polarity pattern. The $50 range is a good start as the bare minimum. A USB mic will work just fine. Do your homework. A pop filter is a must. Boom arms will save you a lot of time and comfort. If you're frugal, you can get a quality microphone, pop filter, and boom arm all under $75. Depending on where you live, your recording environment may need to be adjusted. If you live in the city or live in a place with thin walls, you may need to record audio at a different time. I'm currently recording this at 5.30 in the morning. I love the smell of a kicked ass in the morning. For the authentic gun sounds pack, I had to be outside to capture gunshots. The environment determines how sensitive you can have your microphone without any background noises. Do not buy anything until after you configure your mic. There's a chance you might not need to buy anything. One test you should do is the clap test for when you're indoors. Clap your hands once and listen for a metallic echo or reverb. It'll be a little harsh and tinny. I'll clap my hands really loudly so you can hear it. Yeah, I had to turn the volume up because my room is somewhat soundproofed, but you can still hear it at the end of the clap. If you hear that metallic sound well, you might need to adjust your environment. It's not just a reverb thing, it gets into the sound itself. This happens because sound travels. Sound will bounce off of walls, distort, and travel back into your microphone. This is bad. This will make your sound unpleasant. Fixing bad acoustics can either be relatively cheap or outright expensive. The most expensive fix is installing acoustic foam on walls, but there's some trial and error to it. A more moderate fix is to buy one of those isolation shields for like 30 bucks. They work, but there's two issues with them. They might not be compatible with your boom arm, and they can take up some space if set up in front of your PC. The cheapest fix you can do is put fix sheets on surfaces such as walls. You can try tweaking your microphone sensitivity, but poor acoustics can still bleed in. When recording these sounds, I did everything I can with a low budget to remove bad acoustics, but a tiny bit still got in as you heard with me clapping and having to turn it up all the way, but you really can't hear it. Depending on your situation, it's near impossible to fully remove, but you can still remove most of it. And now it is time to configure your mic. Many issues people have about their microphone quality are that they haven't properly set it up. Before recording any sounds, use your voice as a foundation. Plugged in cables and turn on devices can cause noise due to electric interference. This can't be entirely avoided though, because your primary source is going to be your PC. See if you can move your PC under your desk or further away from your microphone. If your PC is on your desk, it's possible for your mic to pick up the fans. If you need your PC on your desk, you can still follow the steps below. That just means your mic sensitivity has to be a little lower. Make sure your mic is on the opposite side of your desk from your PC. The further away your mic is from your PC, the less it will pick up the fans. Ensure the PC is further back on the desk than your mic. If your mic is a cardioid, then it'll be much quieter. There are two ways of adjusting microphone sensitivity. You could either do it through your operating system or you could do it through Audacity. Personally, I would do it through Audacity just because it's a lot easier and you're most likely gonna be using Audacity for sound recording anyways. I'm gonna show both ways on how to do it because some people just don't wanna use Audacity. They just wanna jump straight into something like FL Studio or Ableton or Cakewalk. Don't worry about those software. I'll talk about them in the next part. For your OS, I'm gonna use Windows because that's what I use. For Windows, open up Settings, System, Sound, Input, Device Properties, Additional Device Properties on the right. Go to Listen and checkmark Listen to this device and press Apply. If you hear any background noise, lower the microphone sensitivity in levels. Speaking of levels, I'm gonna to listen to Avicii after this. For Audacity, record a track without speaking for a few seconds, then play it back. If you hear any background noise, lower the recording volume slider. It has a microphone symbol on it. 
and you just rinse and repeat. And that's basically it. It does the exact same thing your operating system does, but it takes a lot less steps. The pop filter should be at minimum two inches away from the mic. You can probably get away with one inches or three inches, but two is the golden number because if your pop filter is too close to the mic, then the vibrations might catch into the mic from the pop filter, negating the effect. If your pop filter is too far away from the mic, that forces you further away from the microphone, which is a little bit uncomfortable and takes away from the sound. Since you turn down your microphone sensitivity, your desired sound or voice is going to be much quieter. You might be tempted to turn the sensitivity back up, but don't. Move the microphone closer to your mouth. This might be a bit uncomfortable, but if you see videos of people singing or content creators on YouTube or Twitch, they are very close to the mic. This applies to recording sounds too. Everything depends on your mic and environment. I would start by moving the mic about six inches away from your face or whatever you'll be recording. Many sources say many different things about how far your mic should be, but six inches is a good start. The next thing you should do is record yourself speaking in a speaking voice directly facing the mic. This allows you to get a good idea on whether you need to adjust your settings, do you need to be further away from your mic, closer to your mic, do you need to adjust your audio settings, do you need to adjust your sensitivity, uh, stuff like that. After doing all these steps, it is perfectly acceptable for the background noise to be barely audible. When you're recording a sound, you won't even hear the background noise unless it is dead silent. And even then, you're most likely going to cut out the silent parts anyways. That's really all the advice I can give you for the hardware portion of this guide. Uh, give your mic a whirl and stay tuned for the next part while I'll get into the actual recording and sound design. While waiting for the second part of this guide, experiment and get comfortable with your setup. Doing that is extremely important before going into part two. If part two is already released, I highly recommend doing these two things before continuing further. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely comment because there's probably some things I missed. If you have questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you are into audio as much as I am and you have some experience, please share it because it could definitely help out other people who want to get into game design and the audio side of things. While also maybe they want to get into music, maybe they want to get into podcasting to help promote their projects. Audio design is such a huge field that it expands beyond the game development sphere. Most likely, you're going to be using these in your other projects. And with that, I bid adieu. Rock on.